What is the correct two-handed backhand backswing technique? And how does the rest of your backhand get affected by your take back? If you look at the pros, almost no two players have the same exact backswing shape or size. Just look at Murray or Djokovic's two-handed backhand in slow motion, and you'll see them using this compact yet powerful swing. While other great two-handers like Zverev will have a higher and larger take back. So that raises the question, how should you be developing your backswing technique? What's up athletes, you're here because you believe that you can maximize your potential on the tennis court with the law of success, learn, apply, and win. And the truth is that yes, although the exact backswing shape and size that you use will ultimately be up for you to decide, there are certain common threads that you can see in all great two-handed backhands. Now, Dr. Brian Gordon has classified and studied the types and techniques of the two-handed backhand in great depth, so much of the contents in this video can be credited toward him. And watch the video all the way till the end, because by the end, you'll know the three most common backswing types across all tennis players, which backswing types are the best for generating power and topspin, the fundamental two-handed backhand backswing techniques that every player should be using, and lastly, a simple four-step drill progression that you can use to start developing your two-handed backhand. And if you wanna see more two-handed backhand technique videos from us, just leave this video a like and let us know in the comments below what other two-handed backhand techniques you wanna see in the future. Let's go. Saw you from across the room the first major backswing type is called the long arm take back. And this backswing type involves a fairly large backswing or loop used to generate racketed speed. And this is most commonly used by young junior players who are trying to use this speed or momentum generated from this long loop as a source of power. You'll also see some professional women like Sloane Stevens who are known for their larger take backs and as it turns out, just like on the forehand side, this big and loopy backswing starts to become a glaring disadvantage at higher levels of tennis. In this backswing, the racket tip starts pointed straight up and slightly above your head and with your hands pulled all the way back at the top of your backswing. Players will then loop the racket from this high position down into the hitting slot to start building racketed speed. And during your acceleration forward, your torso rotation will be the primary source of power. And because your arms have little to no independent acceleration forward, your top arm elbow will likely be bent and tucked in close to your body on contact. Now, the disadvantage to this is that when your elbows are pulled in so close to your body and you have so little independent acceleration forward from your arms, it's harder to adjust the direction of your racket's forward force to generate more or less topspin. And that leads to one mode, flat. The next two backswing types we're about to cover will help you vary up your power and topspin more and give you the ability to adapt to different types of shots that might come your way. The next backswing type is called the compact loop, and it's pretty straightforward. It's a compact version of the first loopy backswing. You'll see players like Zverev use this backswing type, and this backswing also begins with a full loop with your racket head starting above your head. But during your racket drop, instead of pointing back or sideways essentially parallel to the baseline, your racket head will point directly backward before accelerating back forward. And this makes a drastic difference in the rest of your backhand because with your racket staying on the right side of your body, you are able to accelerate forward with a much more compact and direct path toward the ball. With this compact loop, your arms will play a far more independent role with your top arm typically being held straighter than the first backswing type on contact. Now, because of this compact acceleration forward, the players are able to utilize both torso rotation and an independent arm acceleration forward. And with the additional force coming from your arms, you'll be able to vary up the topspin and pace a lot more. Sorry from across the and finally, we've got the direct take back. This final backswing variation is what you'll see players like Djokovic, Murray, and Nabanian using. 
Players using this backswing type will extend their arms outward away from their body and with the racket face basically remaining parallel to their chest throughout their entire backswing. Your racket head and hands will never cross the left side of your hitting plane, basically staying on the left side of your body. And while different players might have slight differences in their backswing shapes, most players with backswings of this variation will take their racket back and slightly upward. And a key commonality is that players will all have their racket head above their hand at the start of the forward swing. This version of the two-handed backhand allows you to shape the type of shot you want to hit a lot. And typically, this backswing type will enable you to generate the most force from your top shoulder, specifically during your forward swing. And this will push your contact point further out in front of your body. So in terms of mechanics behind these swing types, keep in mind that the second and third examples where your racket stays on the left side of your body and remains compact will allow you to utilize both your torso and independent arm acceleration better. And you'll ultimately be able to generate more racket head speed during the flip when you're accelerating forward and hitting a heavier and more powerful shot. Plus, you save time with this compact swing. And that's why you'll notice that most high-level players and ATP pros use this smaller loop and more direct approach to accelerating forward to the ball with the third backswing type. So how can you recreate this optimal two-handed backhand backswing technique? After you split step, focus on getting your hips and shoulders turned as opposed to having any independent take back with your arms. Focus on turning your shoulders sideways until they are about perpendicular to the net. And in order to do this, you'll need to start taking crossover steps to move to the ball as opposed to just staying in an open stance and sidestepping to the ball. During your unit turn, you can straighten your bottom arm out. And while different great players, of course, can have slight differences in their backswing shapes, I recommend that you use the simplest version where your racket travels backward and slightly upward with your racket head above your hand throughout the entire backswing. To make sure that you're getting your full shoulder turn, you can think about looking at the ball over your right shoulder with your chin resting on your shoulder. And another thing to note is that you should allow your front shoulder to dip slightly down during your backswing. Now, if you want us to cover this racket flipping action in more depth, kind of like we did with the forehand wrist slide technique, let us know in the comments below and leave this video a like. So once these fundamentals are ingrained into your muscle memory, you can start working on adjusting to the height and speed of the balls as it travels to you, rather than always starting from the same racket height. For instance, if you're hitting a ball that's coming in at about head height and you're starting with your racket head at about waist height, as you swing forward, your swing path will be extremely vertical, leading to an okay lob, but making it virtually impossible for you to drive through your shots. So instead, you can raise the height of your take back by adjusting the tilt of your torso to be more upright, and then as you accelerate forward, visualizing your racket head above your hand. So this is a pretty simple drill progression that'll help you start developing the full coil and compact backswing preparation on your backswing. First, from your ready position, start by isolating the first phase of your backswing, your unit turn. Focus on turning your shoulders until they're sideways onto the net while keeping your racket strings about parallel to your chest. Progression two. Still, from your open stance, start building in the front shoulder dip and focus on getting your chin on your right shoulder to look over, which will help you in seeing the oncoming ball. Progression three. After you felt comfortable with this, you can build in the two footwork patterns. Start by simply stepping forward into your closed stance and do about 500 repetitions of this. Progression four. And finally, you can add in the movement to the ball by crossing your left foot over your right leg. But remember to get your shoulders turned first. And in the end, you can piece it all together with the ball.
All right, let's recap what we covered today. There are three basic backswing types on the two-handed backhand. The first, called the long-armed takeback, involves a big loop with your racket head traveling behind the right side of your body. The second, called the compact loop, still uses a loop during the backswing, but is much more compact and travels directly back. The third, called the direct takeback, keeps your racket head above your hand and stays on the left side of your body, never crossing your hitting plane, and primed for dynamically flipping down into the hitting slot. The second and third versions allow you to utilize more independent arm acceleration forward, allowing you to add more variations of power and spin to the ball. So athletes, you've learned. Now comment below how you're gonna apply these instructions on the court. If you want us to create more video topics related to the two-handed backhand, let me know in the comments below and leave this video a like. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe, click that bell notification button while you're at it. Until next time, athletes, go out and train hard. See you in the next video.